two, three. Okay. Thanks for tuning in to our madcap edition of four games of Axis and Allies here at Carl Aro's house as February draws to a rainy close. We got our first major playtest of the new World War I game for Axis and Allies and carried through for seven or eight turns. As you can see the position currently on the board, the French have been successfully resisting the German incursion, stalling them out in the rain, and are now poised to counterattack with the recently gained air superiority, with a little bit of support from a, a British expeditionary force that recently took Belgium. Meanwhile, in the Eastern Theater, Germany's rebuilt navy made a daring attack, seizing Karelia and Livonia, following up with Poland and Finland on subsequent turns, which ultimately sucked enough territories away from Moscow to trigger the Russian Revolution. So that leaves Moscow, Ukraine, Tatarstan, and Kazakhstan as a rump Russia out of play, while the Russian Empire is no more. In the East, Constantinople is poised at the brink of ruin, with the British <laughs> having poured eight to ten units a turn into India every single turn throughout the game, uh, allowing the British to push forward after the Ottomans made an unsuccessful foray to retake Transjordan and were repelled uh, from both sides of their empire. In Africa, the Germans uh, scored some initial victories, taking out a couple of Allied troops, but missed a couple of key attacks, which gave the Allies a chance to regroup with French reinforcements that were ferried all the way down from the mainland through the incredibly strategically important Togoland down to Cameroon and the Belgian Congo. In the Belgian Congo, the Allies were able to stage a defense for several turns that left time for the rest of the forces to catch up and finally destroy the Germans. Meanwhile, in Italy, the Austrians penetrated uh, fairly worryingly into the Italian interior, taking at various times Switzerland, Piedmont, Venice, and threatening to invade Tuscany. But the Americans arrived in Tuscany in the nick of time, converting what could have been a doom for the Italians into a pushback by the Italians would force into Venice, which they now hold. Finally, uh, the Americans had been setting up a ferry from the United States over to Morocco and from Morocco to Tuscany, and have almost finished building four sets of three transports, which will allow them to land six units a turn in Tuscany. Uh, meanwhile, in the Baltic Sea, there's a standoff with the combined Allied navies afraid to sail through the German mines, and the German Navy holed up in the Baltic, with an Italian cruiser serving as a spoiler role, making it a little difficult for the uh, Germans to bring in new troops to Russia, which is not that useful now that Russia is out of the war. In all, we found that World War I was a fun and interesting game to play, but as in the real war, the trenches do bog down a bit, and so after 13 hours, the game has not reached its formal victory conditions. Moving on to the next board, we have Axis and Allies Pacific. No, 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 we've got the next board, which is Axis and Allies Pacific, where Japan occupied the East Indies for a few turns and collected enough victory points to win. <laughs> Moving on to the next board, uh, we have the second Axis and Allies 1942 second edition game played today. And it's been a fairly balanced game after a bid of 16 IPC that was spent uh, on a fighter for Moscow and a tank in Egypt. The Russians made a standard opening to Belarusia and West Russia, stacking West Russia hard and forcing the Germans to play conservatively on the Eastern Front. The Germans have been able to bleed a fair amount of Russian troops off of the Eastern Front and were able to seize Karelia on turn three and hold it. But because of repeated and fairly early and successful Allied incursions into France and Northwest Europe, the Germans had not been able to penetrate further into the Russian interior. Meanwhile, the, uh, the German Mediterranean fleet was never attacked by the British after a reinforcing build of only one destroyer, and so it's ferried two units every single turn into Africa. Instead, the British opted to attack the East Indies with the combined Australian and Indian fleets, successfully taking out a couple of Japanese capital ships and seizing the island with their four infantry to two infantry. Japan was eventually able to take that back, but this slowed them down on the Indian campaign, which has now come to something of a stalemate near Burma. 
Japan's strategy here is to repeatedly ferry troops to Yunnan in the hopes of eventually overpowering the three production in India with the six production they can reach each turn from Japan. But meanwhile, the United States has assembled a fairly impressive navy off the coast of Australia and New Guinea and has been slowly picking off low-value territories as it inches closer to the Japanese fleet. Uh, the game's still very much undecided. We don't know what's going to happen next. France is live, the Eastern Front is live, the Middle East is live, the china burma Indie Theater is live. There's lots going on, and uh, despite being several turns in and getting to see what kind of middle game we've got, we're not going to see much more of this game. Uh, but at least we know that with a 16-point bid, there can sometimes be an interesting and balanced game that's fun for everyone to play. This was not the case in the first game of Axis and Allies 1942 Second Edition that we played, where the Allies put down a bid of one fighter and one infantry for Moscow after the first Moscow combat turn, because the bid was forgotten, and Moscow went into West Russia and Belarusia and did not score a single hit uh, and was forced to retreat. Although, showing up as Germany on turn one, I noticed that I only had artillery, one artillery left in West Russia, so some hits must have been scored at some point. But at any rate, it was, uh, it was a terrible first roll by all accounts for the Russians, which set them back for much of the game, especially since the Japanese were able to make good progress, having been pretty much neglected in the Pacific by a rookie 1942 second edition player playing Britain. Uh, that's a wrap, and thanks for joining us for the fourfold video recap of February Axis and Allies of the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs>